My name is Jim Selbach. For 36 years, I've been a practicing bankruptcy attorney. For the last 10 years, my practice has been devoted exclusively to automatic stay and discharge injunction violation cases. Now, I've established a network of bankruptcy attorneys and a very efficient and effective means to administer these cases. Based on this experience, I can tell you that right now, based on your current caseload, you have a revenue stream in your office that's untapped. My system can monetize that for you. Now, we all know how this works, right? Your client gets a letter or a bill or a phone call from one of his or her creditors. Uh, then you task your employees to get that stopped. They take valuable time out of their day to write letters and make phone calls to creditors who have already been notified of the commencement of the case. You get paid nothing, your client gets nothing, and the stay is not enforced. There are no consequences. Now this is crazy. It's also not the law. Now I know it's the practice, and I did it myself for 30 years, but it's not the law. Congress enacted the automatic stay violation motion section of the code to enforce the automatic stay. Compensation for actual damages is secondary. Now here's what Judge Cangelis Ruiz said in a decision known as In Ray Benjamin. She said this, an action brought under Section 362K seeks primarily to vindicate the debtor's right to be free from harassment of creditor demands and preserve the integrity of the automatic stay. And she cites the Second Circuit in the Weber decision, which discusses, discusses rather the legislative history of 362K. She goes on to say, compensating the debtor for actual damages suffered in such actions serves secondarily to encourage debtors to bring stay violations to the attention of the creditor and the court. Now, the reason that there are so many stay violations and believe me, there are lots of them, is because there are so few automatic stay violation motions. Creditors have absolutely no incentive to comply with the law because they know if they do violate the automatic stay, they'll get a letter or a phone call which will simply ask them to stop. There are no consequences. There are no sanctions. There are no monetary penalties. So why in the world should they do anything to bring their practices in compliance with the automatic stay? Now contrast that with the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. Creditors, collection agencies, uh, law firms that specialize in collection are rigorous in training their employees to comply with the FDCPA. Why? Because they get sued. No one calls them and says, look, could you please stop violating the FDCPA? They pay monetary sanctions, and so they comply with the statute. That does not happen with the automatic stay. Now, with my system, the automatic stay is enforced, and the burden on your office is relieved. Your employees just take a couple of minutes to refer the matter to my office. We do everything. We get the stay violation stopped. We get money for your client, which they're very happy at. We get money for you and the automatic stay is enforced. Now, if you'd like to learn more about becoming part of our growing network of bankruptcy attorneys, call me at 315-471-6611. Or maybe you just want to send one case to us just to see how this works. You can do that too. Also, I'll be at the uh, Arasaka Conference coming up on November 11th and 12th. Maybe I'll see you there.